All right, as it says on the screen there, you have a homework assignment due now, and another one will be ne due next Tuesday. In lab today, we're going to have um, group A at 2 o'clock and group B at 3. We're going to be working with the Water Gems program. How many of you have already installed that on your own computer and are bringing that computer to class today? All right. Well, I'm sorry to see it's not more of you because the tablet computers are just really awful, unreliable machines, and uh, I pity that you're going to have to use them, but you will. And so we'll try and make the best of that at 2 o'clock and 3 o'clock. Um, hopefully you remember what lab group you're in. That list is back in the earlier notes if you don't. Uh, and you'll need to submit that hydrostatic lab in, uh, lab report in class in the lab this afternoon. We're going to continue talking about hydrostatic forces on flat surfaces today. Um, but before we do, I wanted to uh, revisit the idea of an inclined differential manometer. And the reason why is that you're going to have a homework problem that is an inclined differential manometer. And I wanted to point out the difference between what's called piezometric pressure and piezometric head. And we've touched on this briefly before, that you can express pressure in terms of a length rather than in terms of when we have pressure, the units are newtons per meter squared, or the same thing as Pascal. But when we measure that same quantity in terms of a length, what we're doing is we're saying it's the pressure divided by the unit weight of water. And so we're finding the equivalent depth that's related to a pressure. And so the units there, if you have a pressure which is newtons per meter squared, and you divide by newtons per meter cubed, then the units that are left from this, since the newtons cancel out, and these meters squared are going to cancel out from this going from the denominator up to above. It'll just have units of length, of meters. And so hydrostatic head is essentially measuring the same thing, but just with different units. And so you can, with piezometric pressure, divide the pressure term by gamma and the gamma z term by gamma and end up with pressure head and elevation head. Um, and so you can find the difference in piezometric pressure according to this formula that was introduced earlier. And so the, the differential elevation in this differential manometer allows you to quantify the change in piezometric pressure from one to two. If you want to know the change in piezometric head, you can use that same deflection delta H. And it's the ratio of the manometer unit weight to the flowing fluid unit weight minus one. So now on to the main topic. Uh, revisiting the idea of piezometric, uh, I'm sorry, revisiting uh, hydrostatic pressure and hydrostatic forces. I, I showed you this figure before just to give an example of the types of questions we're going to be solving with hydrostatic forces. And so let's actually go through and do the calculations of this one. You've had a chance to look at those calculations with the lab that's due today. Um, but we're going to have a lot of examples today, so you have plenty of practice. I don't want there to be any uncertainty. I want you to feel really comfortable on how to solve these problems. We're going to find the hydrostatic force and its location for what's acting on the gate from the water side and then find out what force is required to hold the gate closed, what force F is required to hold the gate closed. You can see that in this example, the water temperature that's specified is 20 Celsius, and so we're not going to use the standard uh, unit weight of 9810. When the temperature is specified, you go back into the appendix and find the actual pr uh, unit weight of value, value associated with that. So here we have A is equal to 3 meters, B is equal to 4 meters, and the unit weight is 9790 newtons per meter cubed off of the appendix. First thing we want to do is find the distance to the centroid. And the distance to the centroid here 
delta H, just by inspection, you can tell that it's two meters. This is a rectangle, and it's only the submerged depth that matters to us. And so the center of area is two meters under the surface. So delta H is two meters. The next thing we want to do is find the pressure at the centroid. And the pressure at the centroid is uh, P bar, and the formula for that is delta H times gamma, the unit weight of the liquid. Okay, so the delta H is 2 meters, and the unit weight of the liquid is 9790 newtons per meter cubed. So we have a pressure at the centroid, 19580 newtons per meter squared. Any questions so far? If you don't know any of the terminology I'm using so far, now is the time to get that cleared up. If you're not comfortable with what I'm referring to by centroid or, um, or any other aspect, I really would welcome your questions. It's important to clarify things early so that the uncertainty doesn't snowball. Well, we have an object that the submerged portion of it is 4 meters and the width of it is uh, 3 meters. So here's the center of the area and uh, beneath the water line. You know, here's the, the area continues above the water line, but we're only interested in the, the part of it that's submerged for calculating its forces. And so you can see that the centroid, meaning the center of area, is going to be halfway up and down and halfway side to side. And so there's 1.5 meters from the side edge to the center, and then it is uh, halfway down and halfway in the middle. So if the water level starts to rise, then the centroid would also rise. We'd also, we'd have to find out, so if it turns out that you add more water to the system, and now the water is 4.5 meters, then that would mean that our centroid is now, the delta H is 2.25, right? All the way? Okay, so here's our object, and then the water level's up here. Here's the centroid, is in the center of the area, but then the delta H is from the water level to the center of area. Okay, so now back to this example, we found the pressure at our centroid where we're going down two meters to get to the delta H. Now three, the hydrostatic force the force is the pressure at the centroid times the area okay we found the pressure at the centroid is 19,580 newtons per meter squared and we're going to multiply that by the area of 12 square meters so the total magnitude of the hydrostatic force is 234,960 newtons. Now what about the location of that hydrostatic force? So the location the location of the force is actually below the center of area. Now, here's a side view of that gate. And I want to illustrate that the pressure distribution is increasing. So here's the water level. And what's happening is that at the top, there's no pressure. Because we have air, and we're saying air pressure is zero. And the pressure is increasing. The deeper we get, the pressure is going up and up. And there is a linear increase in the accumulation of pressure. So this is showing that pressure is going up. 
and we're integrating that pressure over the area to find the force. Pressure times area is force, and so we're saying what is the equivalent force to that distribution of pressure? If there's, like, if we're going to replace that distributed pressure over the area by a single force, where is that force located? And it's below the centroid. Here's the centroid. It's below the centroid, and we can calculate that by starting with the Y bar. And does anybody remember what the written description of Y bar is? It's what? That's right. Yeah, it's the, uh, the slant or inclined, inclined distance from centroid to water surface. Sometimes we'll have a plate that's at an angle. In this case, the vertical distance and the slant distance is the same since it's straight up and down. And so Y bar is going to equal delta H and that's equal to 2 meters. The area moment of inertia, I, which is the area moment of inertia, the formula for that is A B cubed divided by 12. So it is 3 meters, 4 meters cubed divided by 12. So it's 16 meters to the fourth is the area moment of inertia. YCP is the uh, inclined distance from force location to water line. Okay, and that formula for YCP is Y bar plus I divided by Y bar A. And so in our case, the Y bar is 2 meters, the I is 16 meters to the fourth, Y bar is 2 meters, and then the area is 12 meters squared. So we're going to be calculating how far is it from the water surface down to the location of that force. If we put those numbers into our calculator, we will get that YCP is equal to 2.667 meters. So that means the distance from the water line down to the location of the force, YCP is 2.667 meters. It just so happens that we had a triangular distribution of pressure on this gate. It started at zero and it went down to its maximum pressure. And so the location of the hydrostatic force is two-thirds of the way down that face because that is the uh, sort of the location of average pressure. If we had a gate that is submerged like this, though, it's not going to be starting from zero. The pressure would have some value to begin with and it would go up and up and up and up. So we can't always say that YCP is two-thirds of the way down the face. It's just, in this instance, it's two-thirds of the way down this face because it starts at the water line is where we begin having the pressure applied. We'll work other examples today where we have to go through this formula to calculate YCP and we can't just say it automatically it's two-thirds of the length down in through the fluid. Okay, so we've calculated the magnitude and location of the hydrostatic force. If I ask you for the magnitude, it's the pressure at the centroid times the area. And then the location, that means calculate YCP. Now the next thing is what's the magnitude of this force F that's keeping the gate closed. And to do that, we have to set up a very simple moment balance. 
saying that the uh, counterclockwise moment that's trying to force that gate open is going to be resisted by the clockwise moment of that force F that's pushing to keep the gate closed. So we have some hinge, and we know that there's a force that has magnitude of uh, 234 960 newtons, and it is 2.667 meters down from that hinge. And then we want to know what is the magnitude of the force required where there is a distance of 4 meters from the hinge to the place that it's located. So you can see they're acting in opposite directions. So we're going to have the 234,960 newtons and a distance of 2.667 meters balanced out by this force F at a distance of 4 meters. So we can set that up and calculate that the force is 156,640 newtons. So we don't have to push as hard to keep it closed not as hard as the actual hydrostatic force, simply because the location that we're applying is further away from the hinge than the location of the hydrostatic force is. Now, what about extraneous information? You're always going to have loads and loads of information that you don't need. It doesn't matter that there's a meter above the water line up to where this uh, gate ends. So this, this distance here of one meter above the hinge is irrelevant. It didn't work into our calculations at all. They're trying to trick you. They're trying to trick you into thinking that the distance B should be five meters don't fall for the trick, okay? It's just, the, it's just the, the surface under the water line that's relevant. Any questions about this illustration? All right, well, in that case, I'd like you to take a crack at a similar problem, working with a partner where we've got a gate but in this instance, the water line isn't up to the edge of the gate. Actually, the water line is above the edge of the gate. The gate is here, and we learn from the problem description that H, this distance H is 6 meters, but the gate is only 3 meters tall. So this drawing isn't to scale, uh, because just by looking at it, it maybe looks like the gate height is about 2 thirds of H. But what we're learning from these dimensions is that H is actually 6 meters, and then the gate height is 3 meters. And so that means there's another 3 meters of water above this shaft here that's at the top edge of the gate. So find the magnitude of the hydrostatic force and its location um, acting on the gate. I don't, I'm not asking you to find anything having to do with how much you'd have to push to keep it closed. This is just the magnitude and the uh, location of the hydrostatic force. Okay, so go ahead and get started on that. So we start off calculating the, uh, the delta H, and that's the depth vertically from the water level to the centroid. And that's a vertical depth even when the gate is at an angle. In this case, it's straight up and down, but delta H is always a vertical distance. So the centroid is going to be in the middle of that 3 meter high gate, so 1.5 meters down the edge of the gate, and then there's 3 meters of water above the, ed the top edge of the gate. So the total is 4.5. Find the pressure at the centroid by multiplying the delta H by the unit weight of 9790, and we pick that unit weight because it says in the problem statement it's water at 20 degrees. <coughs> Excuse me. And so multiply those two together, find the pressure at the centroids, 44,055 newtons per meter squared. Multiply that by the area to find the hydro hydrostatic force magnitude. So the magnitude of the force is 234,330 newtons. Any questions up till here? 
Then we, uh, since this plate is vertically inclined, delta H and Y bar are the same, calculate the area moment of inertia, find that it's 4.5 meters to the fourth. That's an unfortunate coincidence, right? That it's 4.5 and 4.5, because then that makes it a little bit hard. If you're just substituting in the numbers, you don't know which is which. I should have made this example so that, uh, coincidentally, the area moment of inertia is not the same as the delta H and the Y bar. But in any case, hopefully you can keep that straight, that the Y bar is 4.5 meters. Area moment of inertia has units of 4.5 meters to the fourth. And so that when we divide that area moment of inertia by Y bar A, which will, mul when multiplied, have units of meters to the third, cancels out the meters to the fourth. And the overall YCP, the depth of the centroid, is 4.667 meters. That's how far it is from the water line down to where the force is located. So all the way from the surface vertically down to where the surface is, to the water is located. Now, it's, it's vertical distance here because that gate's straight up and down. It won't always be. We'll work an example today where we have an inclined gate. And that's where the geometry really kicks into high gear. You're going to hopefully be able to remember back to uh, high school geometry, learning all your four, five, three, four, five triangles and sine, cosine, all that stuff. Dust it off because you're going to need it. Any questions on this example? Why, what is 4.5? Oh, sure, yeah. Let's do a drawing of that. So here we've got the bottom. We've got the gate up to here. And then it's affixed to some sort of thing. And then here's the water. OK, so the centroid we know is the center of area. So it's halfway up and down. That means that it's 1.5 meters here and 1.5 meters there. Now the H, the overall H, it says is 6 meters. So here's 6 meters. And so it's going to, if this is 3, then that means that we've got also 3 meters there. And so the depth all the way to the center of that area, delta H, is going to be 1.5 plus the 3. Other questions? All right. So let's tackle that inclined plate example here. So in this instance, we have a plate that's 2 meters wide, 3 meters long. By the way, um, there's a reason why I've given that dimension in the side view and not in the front view. Because if I'd given it in the front view, since it's at an angle, um, it, if it's three meters in length, it actually won't have a distance of three meters in this dimension because of the way things are when they're inclined. So you know that this piece of paper is eight and a half by 11, right? That's the standard letter size. Eight and a half inches wide, 11 inches tall. So look at it. This is magic. I'm going to make this paper disappear, right? Did it just get, did the paper change size? No. The paper didn't change size. It looks like it's not the same size. But as I turn it, depending on your viewpoint, um, the view of its dimensions change. And so it's, it only looks like it's 11 inches tall when you're looking at it straight on. When you're looking at it from an angle, you couldn't dimension and say that it's 11 inches from here to here. You have to look at it either from the side to know its length or from straight on. So that's why in this drawing, the three meter height of the gate is dimensioned in the side view. So we're going to follow the same process here. Maybe I should just erase some of these, not all of them. Uh, we're going to use the standard unit weight for water because it's not telling us any certain temperature. So we're back to our standby 9810 newtons per meter cubed. Okay, the uh, width of the gate is 2 meters. I'll change that. 2 meters is the width. And it is a height of 3 meters. 
Okay, now the distance to the centroid. The center of area is going to be here in the middle of that three meters. And so I want to know the vertical distance to the centroid. I'm going to erase all this old data here. Okay. The definitions are the same, though. So distance to the centroid. I'm going to take a look at, here's the water line. Here's that plate. And I know it's five meters to the edge. And then I have to go to here to find the centroid. So I want to know how much deeper is it? What is this distance? Because the delta H, delta H is all the way from the surface to the center of area of the plate, the vertical distance. So delta H is going to be 5 plus whatever that vertical component is. So delta H is 5 meters plus 3 times sine of 45 degrees divided by 2. And that is 6.061 <coughs> meters. So the sine of 45 times 3 tells me the vertical component of that length. And then I divide it by 2 to find half the vertical component of that length. So the, we know the, the distance from the surface to the centroid, the vertical distance is 6.061 meters. The pressure at the centroid is going to be 6.061 meters times 9810 newtons per meter cubed. And so that pressure at the centroid will be, uh, oh, it turns out I didn't calculate that separately. I switched straight to the magnitude of the hydrostatic force. So I can do that, though. Let's see, it is 6.061 times 9810, 59458 newtons per meter squared. All right, so now I multiply that pressure times the area of the plate, 59458 newtons per meter squared, and multiply it by the plate area of 6 square meters, And I get 356,750 newtons. Yeah? When we do this, how can you guess what places we want to separate it out? Yeah, well. Yeah. So that's probably Yeah. I'd say four is just a good default. Even though here it's just saying like the distance is five meters. Really maybe I should change that to say five point zero 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 meters because then that gives you the clue that four decimal places uh, or four four units of precision is what you ought to be using. But assume that that's exactly five exactly two and exactly three. And then four is, is fine. And so along those lines, what you'd do is maybe say 356.8 kilonewtons would be the magnitude of the force. Um, now, find the location of the force and the area moment of inertia. Now, we're going to have to find the inclined distance to the, from the centroid to the water surface and also the uh, area moment of inertia. So, this is geometry. Okay. You're going to be drawing little triangles. and So, here is the water line. And we've got a plate under the water. And um, if 
the delta H is known to be 6.061 meters, then the Y bar is going to be this distance. So Y bar is up to here. So Y bar is the inclined distance from the water line to the, cent to the centroid. Okay? And um, if it's a 45 degree angle, like is specified there on the drawing, 45 degrees, then we can find Y bar by 6.061 meters divided by the sine of 45 degrees. So that tells us that Y bar is 8.572 meters. All right. Then the uh, YCP will be Y bar plus I divided by Y bar A. And the area moment of inertia, AB cubed divided by 12, that still applies. Um, hold on a minute. On the last example that we just worked, two by three. Okay, all right, all right. I was worried for a minute there that it was three by four, but it was two by three in the last example. And this is also a two by three. Okay. So the area moment of inertia is going to be the same. If it is uh, 2 meters by 3 meters, I have to cube that divided by 12, 4.5 meters to the fourth. That's our area moment of inertia. So we'll put the Y bar into this formula for YCP, 8.572 meters plus 4.5 meters to the fourth divided by 8.572 meters times the area of 6 square meters. And then the total YCP will be 8.6559 meters. So it will always be a little bit deeper than the Y bar. You can see that the uh, inclined distance from the surface to the centroid was 8.57, and this is 8.66, approximately. Sometimes, yeah. But um, I'm glad you brought that up, because like, I didn't draw the force here. It's, it's in this drawing. But what we're saying is, you know, there is a pressure pushing on this. And the pressure isn't pushing in one point. The pressure is pushing everywhere on that plate. But what we're saying in a problem like this is, where's the equivalent force? If you consider the effect of that pressure over the whole area, where would it be located? And so, in this case, we've got the, uh, we've got the gate. And the force itself is going to be below here, so the force is going to be located there. And so your question was, would you ever want to then find what's the vertical component of that? And maybe you would. You know, sometimes you're going to have to do like a, a moment analysis. They'll say, put a hinge on it. And so then there could be a point where you want to find the vertical component of that length. Yeah. Other questions? All right, so following our pattern of me showing an example, then you work an example with a partner, I'd like you to try this one. It's an inclined gate, but it's not rectangular. All the examples we've worked until now have been rectangular gate. This one's an ellipse. Here's the formula for the area of ellipse. Here's the formula for the area moment of inertia of an ellipse. And there's a tricky thing about that. And when we were working with rectangular gates, they were dimensioned by 
The vertical component, the entire vertical length was B and the entire width was A. But in an ellipse, A is just from the center out to the edge horizontally. It's not the full width of the ellipse, it's just the uh, half the full width. And the same thing with B. It's half that length from the center to the top edge. And so don't make the mistake of having the entire, uh, the entire distance there. Now the other thing is like, what are we looking at? We've got a side view of a pipe that's been cut. And so here's a pipe. I'm, I'm using this piece of paper again. So here's a pipe. And uh, if I cut that pipe at an angle, it actually draws an ellipse. And I wish I had some sort of a way to cut that, but just assume, you know, you've got a, a, a cylinder, like a circular pipe, and then you're cutting it at an angle like this. And the angle that we're cutting it at, it's a four meter diameter pipe, and so it has, the height is four, the hypotenuse is five, and that should give you a clue about the, uh, the distance here, you know, the three, four, five triangle thing. So we know it's eight meters to, from the water surface to the edge. You're going to have to go through the same process as we've gone through before. Find the location of the centroid, then find the depth to the centroid, delta H. Find the pressure at the centroid, P bar and then find the force, F, by multiplying the pressure at the centroid, P bar, by the area. That'll tell you the magnitude of the force. And then to get you on the direction of finding the location of the center of pressure, the location of the force that's acting on this gate, you're going to have to find the Y bar in order to calculate YCP. And, um, then ultimately, the force required to begin opening the gate is going to be a force balance problem. So here's the centroid. We've got the force that's acting below the centroid. Here's the hydrostatic force. And then ultimately, they're saying, what force is required to open up that gate? All right, so I'll turn you loose to work on this example with a, a partner. And once you get a head start, I'll start writing the solution up on the board. The geometry is maybe the hardest thing about it, not necessarily the fluid mechanics. Um, you can see that what I've drawn here is a diagram that's showing the, uh, let's see if I can get that so that it's just right. Okay, so the centroid is that black dot. No, it's a green dot. And the vertical distance from the centroid to the water line is delta H. The inclined distance, y bar, goes from the same centroid of center of the area up to the surface, but it follows the same angle that the plate is angled at. And then YCP is some distance below the centroid, and it's the location that the force is applied at. We know this is a four me meter diameter pipe, and so the vertical distance to the center of that ellipse that covers the face of the pipe, it's two meters down from the top edge to the center of area of the covering on the front face of that pipe. So if we know it's eight meters from the hinge to the surface, and then another two meters from the hinge down to the center of area, that means the delta H is a total of 10 meters. So when I was calculating the magnitude of the hydrostatic force, I had the pressure at the centroid times the area. Pressure at the centroid is delta H times gamma, and then multiply that by the area of the ellipse, which I've calculated separately as 15.708 meters squared. So it turns out that the magnitude of the hydrostatic force is 1,541,000 newtons, or 1.541 meganewtons, as it's referred to later on. And capital M, N means meganewtons. Any questions with that part so far? Maybe interpreting the geometry or anything that we went through to calculate the magnitude of the force? Yeah. 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 
So you feel like it would be more wide than it is tall? Is that what you're saying by opposite? I don't know. Honestly, I think I just need to stare at No, it is hard. The geometry isn't trivial. It's really not. So here we've got a pipe. And now, if I had a laser beam and I cut that pipe at an angle, the front, the opening of the pipe, if I cut it at an angle so that it was um, five meters long on the face, that means that I'd have to cut it so that it had three meters off the edge as I sliced downward. And so then the shape that would be traced, the gate that I'd need to cover up that plug, it would be uh, taller than it is wide. Because if you think about the laser cut that I put through there, um, I'm only taking, um, let's see, I'm, I'm only taking uh, two meters off the edge because it's a three, four, five. So, you know, the pipe used to be all the way out to here, but it was cut off. And so that means that the width of the pipe isn't going to be as big as the height. It is hard to visualize, but... Um, it turns out that this, uh, the, the diameter that's given gives us the height to the centroid and then um, calculate the delta H from that. Um, the next step of finding the uh, distance to the center of the pressure, this is the first example where finally the Y bar and the uh, delta H aren't the same. The first one that you're working on independently. So, to find the inclined distance to the centroid, the key here is looking at it as a 3, 4, 5 triangle. And so the, uh, the 10 meter delta H is equivalent to the 4 aspect of a 3, 4, 5 triangle. And the Y distance, the Y bar, the inclined distance from the surface to the centroid, corresponds to 5. So with like triangles, we can find that the distance Y bar is 12.5 meters. That is uh, this Y bar that's shown in green on the drawing I've done on the board is um, 12.5 meters, where the delta H was only 10 meters. And then to find um, the moment analysis that I, I did ultimately, you can, you can calculate YCP. That's the total distance from the water surface down to the location of the force. But what I said is, since I'm doing a moment analysis later, why not just calculate this distance right here? The gap, <coughs> the gap distance between the center of area and the location of the force, this incremental distance in other words, is YCP minus Y bar. So just the, how far apart those two are is going to be I divided by Y bar A. And how far, those, how far apart those two are, you know, this gap distance is ultimately what I use to calculate the moment distance that I use later on for the, for the moment um, calculations about the hinge. So that's why over here I calculated the difference between YCP and Y bar, and it's 0.125 meters. You could just as easily calculate the YCP and you'd find the, the full length of it is going to be, if, if Y bar is 12.5, then that means that YCP is 12.5 meters plus 0.125 meters. So it would be 12.625 meters. And that's fine, too. It's not a mistake to, to go that route. And then the, the last part here, the force required to open the gate, is where I did the force balance saying, um, we're pulling at an angle with this force, and the distance between the hinge and where the force is being applied to open it up is 5 meters. So F times a 5 meter length is in equilibrium with the hydrostatic force of 1.541 meganewtons and then the distance from the hinge to the point of the force application is 2.625 meters. 
So that's how I was able to calculate the, uh, the force required to begin opening the gate is 0 0.809 meganewtons. Let me give you an important hint. You know, just if you apply the lessons learned on this example into other situations, the force required to open the gate, this F, changes depending on the direction that you're pulling. This F is the minimum force required to open. What if someone was actually at the surface in a boat? They'd be pulling straight up, right? So if they were pulling straight up, then the force would be like, if this was F, then you'd have a whole different ball game. You'd have a different moment distance that you'd have to apply to that force. So the moment distance of five meters applies when the force is perpendicular to that plane. But if the force is at a different angle, then you have to ask yourself, what is the moment distance that goes along with the force? And that will come into play on one of the homework problems. I think you'll see it pretty immediately when you start looking over that assignment. Any other questions about this example? We've just got one more brief illustration, and it's a pretty straightforward one. And that is, what if the plate is horizontal instead of vertically inclined? So here is that same 2 by 3 plate, but this time we want to find what is the force pushing down from above on that when it is submerged at a depth of 5 meters. And so we can calculate that by first finding the depth of the centroid. Delta H is going to be 5 meters. The centroid, the center of area, is submerged five meters down from the water surface. Okay, two, if we want to know the magnitude of the hydrostatic force, it'll be the pressure at the centroid P bar times the area, and the pressure at the centroid is delta H times gamma. And so we'll multiply delta H times gamma times the area. So it's a five meter depth the unit weight is 9810 newtons per meter cubed, and the area of this plate is 6 square meters. So the magnitude of the force is 294,300 newtons. That's the force that's pushing down from above on that plate. There's an alternate way to calculate the solution of this, though. And that is to calculate the weight of the water that's above the plate. So this is what the plate might look like if we were to try to draw it in three dimensions. Let me take another crack at that. Okay. So consider what would be the weight of the water above that plate. To calculate that, we need to know the volume of the water. And the volume of water above that plate is going to be 5 meters, which is the depth, multiplied by its area, which is 2 meters by 3 meters. So in total, there is 30 cubic meters of water that's, abo that's above that horizontal plate. And so then the weight of the water is going to be the volume times the unit weight. And the volume was 30 cubic meters, and the unit weight is 9810 newtons per meter cubed. And as you might expect, the weight of the water there is 294, 300 newtons. So what it tells you is that the force pushing down from above is because of the weight of the water that's above this. Um, so, in the other examples that we've been working, you can either go through the process that we've just done, or you can find the weight of the water above it plus the hydrostatic force acting on the vertical projection. 
We'll talk about projections in detail in the, last, in the next class period, but what it works out to is in this example, I showed you how to calculate that, or what you could have done was you had the water, you had an inclined plate, you can go through the process that we did, or you could find out what's the weight of the water above this, because that's going to be a horizontal force acting down. And then you'd find, I'm sorry, that's a vertical force acting downward, and then you'd find the vertical force. So here was the, the vertical, here's the horizontal. So the total force that's acting on the plate is the combination of those two, where the vertical force is due to the weight of the water and the horizontal force is due to the projection of the plate vertically and then you find the hydrostatic force on that projection. So, just put that in the back of your mind to start percolating through the brain tissues and we'll come back to the idea of this two-step way of calculating the total force. But the, uh, the approach that we worked on all of these examples today is always valid for an inclined plate, whether it's vertically inclined or at an angle or even if it's horizontal. See you in lab this afternoon.